What's up guys? Today we're filming a long overdue video. It's gonna be all about fat tail geckos. We're gonna show off how to care for them, how we care for them, and we're gonna show off some of their cool morphs that they come in. Yeah, there's some of my favorite new species we work with, new species we work with, but we've had a lot of success breeding this year, and they're doing a lot better, so we feel confident in telling you guys how to keep them now. Alright guys, so today we're talking about the cutest little gecko you could get, which is freaking out right now. But these are the African fat tail geckos. As their name suggests, they're from Africa. They're from the west side of Africa and they're from like an arid climate. They're not tropical species, but they do tend to look for higher humidity. They usually go under logs or scrubs. They like to keep a little bit higher humidity than like let's say a leopard gecko because um, that's gonna help them shed and just overall hydration for them. Yeah, and they're actually pretty easy to care for in captivity. As uh, David mentioned, they do like some humidity, so we like to keep them between like 50 to 65% humidity. Also, you can provide like a humid hive. They love to go in there, something with like Eco Earth or Cypress mulch. That's also the substrate we use for their enclosures. Just something that's gonna retain humidity when you do decide to mist. So these guys need about like a 90 degree hot spot, and you can provide that two ways. We like to do like a under tank heater or like heat tape so something that goes under the cage and it provides heat from the bottom. That bottom heat is going to help them digest. Um, some people have used like the overhead heat with like a rock in the bottom so they could so the heat stays so the rock stays uh, warm and they could go on top of that but the best thing to use in captivity is going to be that under tank heater a heat pad something of that nature hooked up to a thermostat and you want to set it up to around 90 95 degrees is, is perfect that way when they feel like just on one side of the tank that way they could thermal regulate on their own when they feel like they want to be a little warmer they go to the side where the under tank heater is on which the under tank heater you put it on the outside of the tank underneath the tank obviously and then you hook that up to the thermostat which is very easy it sounds complicated but it's really not all you got to do is a heat mat and a thermostat is going to cost you maybe around like 50 bucks yeah, some of the cheaper ones aren't going to be very expensive at all. And it's important to have a temp gun. So, so you can read the actual temperature of where your gecko is basking. Because sometimes what the thermostat reads is not what, where the gecko has access to. So it's very important to have a temp gun. Right, because the thermostat, you might set it to 90 degrees, but when you take in consideration the substrate and the glass, it might drop a couple degrees. So what we usually do is we set the thermostat to maybe like 95, and then that way the actual hot spot inside the tank is going to be around 90 or 92 degrees now keep in mind that those little thermostats that they sell at the pet store that you hook up to the tank that is no good for this type of animal you want to get a temperature gun you can get these at Home Depot and this is basically um, like an infrared like laser that's gonna point at the spot that you're that you want to know the temperature at and it's gonna tell you exactly how much that is that's a that's essential for keeping reptiles in my opinion because you want to know exactly what their basking spot is or their warm spot in the cool area so you could point it right above where the heat mat would be and say and read you know it's supposed to read around 90 95 degrees and then you can point it to the cooler side and it should be like 78 to 85 degrees yeah, and these guys are nocturnal, which is why we recommend the heat, the under tank heater over the heat light. A lot of times the heat light does bother their eyes and they're actually hiding in a way when the heat lamp is on. So they do still need to get warm, so that's why the under tank heater works best in our opinion for these guys. And being that also that they're nocturnal, they don't require UVB. You see a lot, like we keep these guys and a lot of breeders keep these guys are in rack systems. Rack systems that are heated at the back at the bottom. You know, they get their D3 through the um, through the crickets, the mealworms, the, the all calcium. the yep, all the insects and when you dust that with calcium with D3. So that's where they get that from so they do not require the UVB and you know, we've we've been keeping these guys for a long time. A lot of breeders have been keeping these guys for a long time and they there is no real difference between ones that get UVB and not UVB. 
Yeah, so that's that's a very good point since these guys are insectivores and they're nocturnal the best way to You know get them their vitamin D3 is to sprinkle with calcium the insects that they're feeding on now African fat tail geckos are strictly insectivores, so they're not gonna eat any of the rapashi like ge gecko diets or anything like that. You're gonna feed them crickets, mealworms, superworms, you know, all kinds of like wax worms, black soldier fly larva, all that kind of good stuff. Now, African fat tail geckos are a little more picky when it comes to food than let's say leopard geckos. And they, too, they do tend to like the crickets a little bit more than mealworms. A lot of leopard gecko breeders will just have a, a dish of mealworms in the tank for the leopard geckos and for the rest of their life and they'll be okay. Fat tails are a little more picky so they'll get tired of that real quick. So you want to mix it up with them. You want to make sure you gut load your insects. What that means is basically feeding your insects like the crickets or the mealworms before you feed the animals. Before you feed the African fat tail the cricket, you want to feed the cricket some carrots, apples, kale, um, collard greens, mustard greens, all those nutrient rich foods that's going to go into the cricket and then that's going to be directly transferred into your African fat tail gecko. Yeah, and if you don't do that properly, your gecko or any animal that you feed crickets to can develop vitamin deficiencies. Yeah. So it is very important to gut load your crickets. And we, we like to do it like the night before, you know, we feed everything. We're going to give like fresh vegetables. There's even some cricket mixes out there that work great too. Dog food works fine. Like, yeah, so you, so you want to give variety to the, to the crickets. Sometimes it's just whatever we have. If we have potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, whatever we have, we just throw in there and keep in mind that you also want to gut load the I'm sorry not gut load keep in mind that you also want to dust the crickets with calcium we use Rapashi calcium plus because it has the d3 and all the vitamins and minerals they need so it's like an all-in-one powder you don't have to get two different powders and worry about if your animal is getting the proper nutrition Rapashi is you know some of the best diets and, and supplements we give to our animals and you could also use some of the gut loading formulas that they sell. It's like mixed with water. You let it sit there. It gets hard, and you feel it to the to the insects. Yeah, and if you do all that stuff right, you know, you keep a happy, healthy fat-tailed gecko. These guys are gonna live like 15 or 20 years. So it is a long-term commitment. It's not you know a panther chameleon that can live five to seven years no these guys are going to live a long time so if you do want one make sure you can care for it for its entire life or if you can't you know give it to someone responsible who will take care of it for its remaining life yeah and when it comes to their enclosure you want to set it like one african fat tail gecko is going to do fine in a 10 gallon tank you could keep two in maybe like a 15 gallon tank or so um and you want to set it up basically you want to give them at least one hide in the warm side and one hide in the cool side if depending on what type of substrate you have you could give them a humid hide or not like if you use eco earth as a substrate then you don't really have to use a humid hide but let's say you use paper towels or like the repti carpet or something like that then you want to give them a humid hide so they could kind of regulate their own humidity and go in there if they want to shed or something some of the best substrates are your eco earth, peat moss works, mulch works. Um, you just gotta be a little careful with impaction when it comes to that, but we've never had a problem. Keep in mind that these guys, you know, survive and do well in the wild and there's nobody cleaning up the, the, yeah. the ground for them in the wild. When it comes to cleaning their enclosure, they tend to poop in one spot, so it makes it really easy to clean and convenient for us, yeah. obviously. But you wanna clean it maybe, as soon as you can spot clean, as soon as you see it's to start to soil up a lot, you can maybe clean it like once every month or every two months, depends on how much poop the geckos are, are, are how many, pooping. how many pooping, how many poops the geckos are pooping. But anyways, um, also you want to make sure that these geckos, you feed them, you don't want to get them too overweight. This is like the perfect weight for these geckos. If the tail is too fat and you see like fat underneath the armpits, that's not healthy. These guys, they have a fat tail like their name suggests, but that's where they keep their water and and like nutrients in case that they go a long time without eating. So you want to keep their tail a little fat, but not, you know, like obese, you know. You want to make sure that these animals are fed maybe like three times a week if they're adults. When they're babies, we like to feed them every day or at least every other day just so they grow quicker because they're not really going to get fat at that point. They're going to use that 
you know those insects and that protein to grow instead of getting fat and that's why we like to feed them a lot a lot more when they're younger but when they're adults slow down on the feeding so they don't become overweight. Yeah, it's just like any of the animals you keep as, as adults. You don't want to feed them too much. One of the biggest issues with animals in captivity is obesity and everything that comes with it. You know, so it'll, de it'll shorten the animal's lifespan, you know, and so it's just not good. So people, we, we, we like to like see an animal, oh, we gotta feed it, gotta feed it. And these guys in the wild, they're not eating that much. Yeah. They're not eating every day a ton of crickets, ton of mealworms, no. like. That's why they do have these fat tails. So when they when it does come, like those months that it's not eating, it's gonna survive off its tail. So three times a week is good, and that's what we recommend. So a popular question we get is, can we keep fat tails together? The answer is yes and no. So it's it really depends on what you're trying to do. You can keep females in groups. Just be aware that one can become dominant, can take the other one's tail off could bully it to, to the point where it's not eating and getting lethargic. So whenever cohabbing anything, just make sure you always keep a good eye on it. Also, we sometimes keep babies together as well, but again, you always risk the chance of them biting off the tail and losing it, but these guys do regrow their tail, which is pretty neat. Yeah, and when they regrow their tail, it doesn't come back normal. It comes back kind of like deformed. So you want to make sure that um, if you want perfect animals, I would recommend keeping them by themselves. But you can keep, like Manny was saying, multiple females together. Just watch them. And if you keep a male and a female together, then they're going to do the nasty. They're going to breed and you're going to get eggs. So if you don't want to breed your geckos, don't keep a male and a female together. And one more thing, make sure you don't keep males together. They're territorial. Most gecko species are. So if you keep two males together, they're going to fight and possibly kill each other. So one of the best parts about African fat tail geckos are all the different morphs that they come in. Now this is what a normal African fat tail gecko looks like. This is the banded type. So basically it's going to be a brown, different shades of brown and the, the bands are going to be darker brown on top. And they're going to be, you know, very plain looking. Some of the wilder animals might look a little more, like a little darker. Um, but this is what a you know normal looking African fat tail gecko looks like and what I have right here is essentially the same exact thing except it's uh, it's called an Oreo which just is another word for exanthic exanthic is a recessive trait that takes away yellow or red pigmentation we're gonna put these guys next to each other they look the same they're both banded and everything it's just different color and it's entire body color not just one spot like the whole body is lacking the red and yellow pigments. Now you can mix that Oreo gene with other genes. So like I showed you, this one has like clean banding. Now the one that David has, has kind of a funky patterning. Yeah, so this is a white out Oreo African fat tail gecko. Now when we put them side to side, you can see that the white out has a wacky pattern. It, the bands are not clean. There's like, it's like messy almost. And it does add a little bit more white to it. Now the whiteout is a co-dominant mutation, so what that means is I need one whiteout to produce visual whiteouts when I pair it to a normal. Let's say we pair the Oreo to a normal, they're all gonna come out looking normal, but they all carry the Oreo gene. Now, if when I pair this to a normal, some of them are gonna come out with the whiteout gene, but they're the ones that don't come out with a whiteout gene are not white out at all. So it's not het for a whiteout. Yeah, they don't carry the gene at all. Yeah, so co-dominant means it's an incomplete dominant. So if you pair two whiteouts together, you'll technically get a super whiteout, but they're not viable. They they're some do hatch, but they tend to not do good or they die right away. So in the hobby we don't breed them. So this is another example of what a normal African fat tail gecko looks like, but this one is striped, so it has that white stripe that runs from the top of the head to the tail base. And in my opinion, they look a little bit better than just the banded wild types. But check that out, that's a cool little stripe it has running down its back. What Manny has in his hands is basically the same thing, but a wide out version. So you can see the pattern gets whacked out a little bit more. It's a more attractive looking animal than like the normal regular stripe. And the cool thing about this guy is he's a wide out stripe, but he's het for Zulu and Oreo. What het means is basically he carries the genes, 
but he is not displaying the jeans. Oh, yeah. What I have right here in my hand is called a striped Zulu. So striped being that white stripe that goes from the head to the tail. Zulu is actually a recessive trait that remember I don't know if you guys remember the bands from the earlier ones, it connects the bands. So it's a complete solid stripe on both sides. And that's what makes it a Zulu. Also, Zulus display a cool belly pattern, if I can get this guy to stop freaking out. It almost looks like it's missing some scales in the belly. Gives it a nice little funky look. Yeah, so the Zulus don't always have that connected band in the middle, um, but the way you can tell if it's a Zulu, if, it's a, if it has those like weird translucent almost looking like belly scales, that's how you can tell if it's a Zulu or not. What I have here is called a patternless, but he is also a whiteout. So the patternless morph is just how, you know, it's self-explanatory. He's like sketchy as hell, man. He is, uh, they don't have any of the bands. The whiteout basically just gives them a little more like, like a static -y like a staticky, static -y kind of look on, on their backs and on their head and on their, by their tail. But it's a pretty cool more, especially when you get, start to mix the patternist with the Oreos yeah. and the striped Oreos. Like the striped Oreo patternist is one of my favorite morphs ever. Alright now, so one of my favorite African fat tail gecko morphs is the A melanistic. A melanistic means that it's lacking melanin, which means it's an albino. This is what an albino African fat tail gecko looks like. You can see it has orange and like almost like purpley looking bands. The one I have on my hand is a banded A melanistic, and the one Manny has is a striped A melanistic African fat tail gecko. All right guys, so this video was long overdue. A bunch of you guys were asking us for it. We're glad we finally got it done. We hope you liked it. If you have any other questions on African fat tail geckos, leave them down below. I think we covered everything, but we'll answer them. You know, if, if there's something we missed, ask us down below and we'll answer them. And if you like our videos, you know, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Also, follow us on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. We post individual content on all those social media platforms, so make sure you guys check them out if you like our content. And uh, Patreon, man. How Patreon. about that? Patreon. Patreon. If you want to get one of these sweet looking shirts, only for our Patreon supporters, and anybody who purchases that Lily White, gotta throw that in there. Also, guys, this today technically so june 1st <laughs> we are releasing brand new african fat tail geckos on the website along with blue tongues crested geckos a bunch of other animals so check out our website update if you're looking for a new pet or a breeding animal or anything we're gonna have some killer 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 animals up for sale check those out let us know what you think about them and thank you guys for the support as always see you guys next saturday now you gotta punch a camera.